my American hero, so forth and so on. And to be honest with you, we thought this was going to be an easy story, right? Okay, great. Let's find this guy that, you know, our, hopefully our mutual acquaintances can put us in touch with him, you know, interview him a little bit about the the event for which he uh, he received the DSC, talk a little bit about the bureaucracy of getting the DSC upgraded, what the process is, and, um, you know, find the citation for the, for the DSC, write a good little battle story, plus the fact that, and the news hook is it's going to uh, be reviewed for a possible upgrade to a Medal of Honor. Um, well, we couldn't have been more wrong. First of all, it took six months at least for us to persuade Willie to sit down and talk to us because he's not a guy for whom that comes naturally. Um, and the second uh, reason was once we did sit down with him and we'd already talked to several of his uh, particularly CIA um, uh, colleagues uh, folks who'd served with him at the CIA. So we sort of had an inkling of this already, but when we sat down and, and talked to him um, for the first time, it was in a, at a restaurant in uh, National Harbor. Any of you who are in the DC area, that's a sort of a, a heavily um, uh, revitalized part of um, Prince George's County, I, I believe in, uh, in, in Maryland. Um, and and once Willie got talking, we realized what an astonishing gold mine of stories this guy was and what an e extraordinary career he had had, um, uh, particularly when you consider that he was a, an, uh, an African-American who uh, enlisted in the army in 1957 um, uh, as fast as he could. He tried to enlist when he was 16 and, the, and they wouldn't take him. Uh, and so he, he enlisted basically as soon as he got out of high school when he was 17. And that was um, in 1957. And he served in the army until 1980. Uh, and as you pointed out that, you know, he had a 23 year army career. And I, I was a I was a, a more than 20 year staff writer at, at Army Times. So I. I have a pretty good feel for what an army officer's career typically looks like, and it doesn't look like Willie Murkison's. Um, it, the amount that he packed into that career was extraordinary. And it doesn't matter which bit of the career you pick, something extraordinary was going on um, <laughs> that he was doing. Uh, whether it's Vietnam and, you know, he's... a He's taking part in a combat jump uh, on the, you know, on the on the border in which he and a bunch of other guys actually didn't land in uh, in, in Vietnam. That they landed they landed across the border in uh, I guess Cambodia it was, um, or or when he's at graduate school. Well, I beg your pardon, not graduate school. When he's the army sent him to undergraduate. Uh, school because he, on his own volition, had a, amassed enough credit hours on his own time that they offered to send him to university full time for two years to allow him to get uh, a you know a four year degree basically. And they said you can go to any university you like, um, and he 